Imagine this. You sit down with a quaint dinner with your extended family. Cousins, aunts, uncles, everyone is there. You know the scene. It's supposed to be nice, right? Just when good old Uncle Jed starts talking about politics and the entire table starts desperately searching for anything else to talk about, you blurt out, You guys have to read this fantasy book I'm reading, The Assassin's Blade. It's a prequel to the Throne of Glass series and follows Selena before Dorian brings her to the capital for the king's competition. The king needs a new champion, and this book expands on why Selena needs the freedom and protection. She's super snarky, and just because she's an assassin for hire, she doesn't always do what she's hired for. She's better than that. The whole series is so good. Have, have you guys seriously not read these books? It's a literal epic. Selena and the other characters are so sarcastic and well-developed. It manages to be really funny, too. And the twists don't even get me started on the twists. Is this scene feeling a bit too similar to your own experiences? While fantasy is more popular than ever, it can still be an overwhelming experience for your aunts, uncles, and grandparents. Here's a full history of the fantasy genre, so you'll have plenty to talk about at your next Thanksgiving meal. It might be a little cliche, but fantasy can be viewed much like a giant tree. First, we should tackle the trunk of the tree. What is fantasy? Well, this is a difficult thing to pin down, as fantasy is such a broad genre of storytelling. Literary critics agree that in order for a piece of fiction to qualify as fantasy, it must do one simple thing. The story has to contain some element of magic or the supernatural. Now, that's a simplistic requirement, but as we climb this fantasy tree and get into the numerous branch-like subgenres, you'll see how common that trope is. The roots of fantasy and the magical quest are extremely deep. Ancient myth from all around the world set up fantasy as a genre. One of the most important fantasy texts is the Epic of Gilgamesh, one of the earliest recorded works of literary fiction. The work follows Gilgamesh and his friend and Kaidu on a grand quest to battle the gods. The ancient stone tablets that the epic are recorded on are believed to be from 1800 BC in ancient Mesopotamia. Other civilizations through time had their own works of fantasy. The Greeks had heroes like Perseus, Jason, and Hercules. All faced adversity from the gods and went on their own journeys, fought magical monsters, and found magical artifacts. Scandinavia had epics like Beowulf, who rose up to defend a kingdom from a terrible monster. The Chinese had the 16th century novel Journey to the West, which followed the monkey king on a grand pilgrimage to the West. All of these contain that magical quest and use the magic trope to explore various themes that still resonate today. Ancient myth would evolve into folk tales, which then would inspire a number of common ideas like dragons, werewolves, and mystical artifacts in modern fantasy. Modern fantasy arguably started in 1858 with George MacDonald's Fantastus. Inspired by a Greek myth, the story follows a young man who is transported to a magical fairy world in search of his ideal of feminine beauty. This book would be the inspiration for the likes of J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis. In fact, it was one of the main reasons both became friends and began working on their own fantasy epics. Another source of inspiration for these modern fantasy titans came in the form of magazines dedicated to the fantasy genre. The first was a German magazine titled Der Orchidengarten, which ran from 1919 to 1921. In 1923, the first English-language fantasy magazine was released, titled Weird Tales, which ran until the 1940s. Weird Tales would feature early work of H.P. Lovecraft, starting with The Call of Cthulhu in 1928. Lovecraft's work would stand as an important step in crossing horror with fantasy. This was arguably the birthing place of dark fantasy, a subgenre focusing on the horrors that magical beings can present. Super scary stuff here. Like dark fantasy, various other fantasy subgenres began appearing at this time. The sword and the sorcery subgenre entered the mainstream in 1950 with Conan the Barbarian. 
Conan's twist on fantasy included a fairly masculine approach, with the muscular hero wielding a sword and engaging in violent adventures. The stories usually follow personal battles rather than world-saving quests. And did we mention, these books are super violent. The subgenre of fairy tales existed long before the 1900s, but definitely saw a rise in popularity due to Disney cartoons adaptations of century-old stories. Fairy tales usually were a more simplified form of folk tales and provided a great gateway into fantasy for younger readers. And of course, high fantasy saw a revolution with Tolkien's Lord of the Rings series. High fantasy, as opposed to the other genres, usually featured in-depth fantasy worlds that were fleshed out and felt lived in. These quests were to save those worlds in an epic fashion. The late 1900s saw fantasy grow into a massive tree with sprawling branches of subgenres, low fantasy, alternate history, sci-fi, steampunk, grimdark, cross-world fantasy. All of these subgenres came to life in the wake of a blooming pop culture of film, TV, and video games. Adaptations came to life on screen, most notably with the arrival of Harry Potter. This marked a rise in young adult fantasy, introducing fantasy concepts to younger readers. In 2018, the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America's 52nd Annual Nebula Conference reported that sales for fantasy books doubled since 2010. There is a thirst for fantasy out there. Fantasy has experienced a modern renaissance. The tree of fantasy is vast and is ripe with subgenres that would cater to even the pickiest of readers. Adaptation is a great gateway to fantasy lit, and it shows just how much our culture has fallen in love with fantasy. And once your family dips their toe into fantasy, you now have the knowledge to help guide them towards their next favorite book. The themes are timeless. The concept of magical adventures, faraway worlds, and the battle of good and evil transcends culture. We've been telling ourselves these stories since the dawn of humanity, and it's only getting better. So next time your family looks at you like a crazy person for bringing up Aelin and the Amulet of Orin, show them this video. You never know, they might actually ask you to go on. You're welcome. Well, that's it. A brief history of fantasy and everything you need to get your aunt or uncle into a brand new fantasy series. Let us know what your favorite works are and what topics you'd like to see us cover in the future.